Rad Nation, today we're going to talk about a way that you can actually help monitor the exposure that's happening on your image receptor such that you can get the best images and consistent images for your patients coming up here at How Radiology Works. Back in the good old days or the bad old days, depending on how you viewed it, film was used for all the acquisitions in your x-ray department. And it was quite laborious, the film processing and everything. One advantage, however, was film had a built-in exposure monitoring system. On your film, what would happen is if you think about the dose on this direction, what's going to happen, there's a kind of a sweet spot here in the middle. This was called an S-curve because it looks like an S-shape here. And if you're in the middle here, your film is going to be properly exposed. If you have too much radiation, your film is going to be too dark. Too little radiation, your film is going to be too bright. But this led to an inherent way of monitoring the exposure that was happening at your image receptor, in which case was film. Now comes the digital revolution. In the digital revolution, like we've talked about, in CR and DR videos, we have a different type of curve. Instead of having this S-shape curve, we now have a nice flat line. We call this linear because it's basically just a line. It means we have a linear relationship between the actual intensity that we're measuring at the image receptor that's gonna come out, in this case of our digital images, and the dose that was imparted at that image receptor or the exposure at the image receptor. This nice straight line is great because you can actually make good images at higher doses or you can make good images at lower doses. From that perspective, it's good. The radiologist is going to be good with looking at those images because they're not going to be saturated, for instance. However, the downside is that there's now not a built-in monitoring situation anymore. Before, the film was monitoring us because we wouldn't actually be able to make a good image if we were outside of this range. Now, when we essentially overdose, we if we use way too much dose, the images are going to come out very clean. And from a perspective of reading those images, though, the radiologist would be fine. But from a perspective of being dose conscious, we actually have a problem. The same thing on the low end. The images are going to come out. In this case, they will be too noisy. There could be an issue here. You might get some sendbacks from your reading radiologist. The biggest issue that we need to monitor is making sure that there's not extra radiation dose that's being used when there was that switch from film to digital. When we're in digital, though, now we need to make up our own way of actually keeping track and actually doing the measurements such that we can monitor the exposure. So this leads us to the concept of what we call the exposure index. The exposure index, we now have digital images, right? With our digital images, we can actually take the measurements from the detector and get what we can call an exposure index that can let us know how well we're doing with respect to what we're targeting for the exposure. We could have a targeted exposure for what we want to have at the image receptor, and then we can use essentially image processing in order to calculate if we're doing well with respect to our targeted exposure. For instance, if the patient is getting a chest x-ray, we'll actually take the scan, we'll get the x-ray image, and then the image processing starts here where we first identify what we call the values of interest. In that, that sense, we're actually just masking out all this dark pixels here that are outside of the actual patient. Once we get these values of interest, then we take what's called a histogram, where we're actually looking at each of the intensity values and counting kind of how many times there was each of the different intensity values. Then we can use that 
along with calibrations of these numbers in order to get an exposure index. Then from the exposure index, we can compare that exposure index with a targeted exposure, and we can get what we call a deviation index, or a relative deviation that we have from our target. And I'll go through this now, but just at a high level in replacing the built-in exposure monitoring on film, we now have a system of doing monitoring of the exposure index and talking about something called the deviation index to see how far you were. If your target's right here, were we too high, too low? And we want a metric which is gonna characterize how close we were from the perspective of exposure. So on those same plots, again, film kept us honest, but we can keep ourselves honest by setting an exposure index here right in the middle. And then if you go too low, you actually get an exposure less than your targeted exposure. If you go too high, you get an exposure more than your target exposure. And then this kind of range in here of exposures is what we call the deviation index. You're actually gonna get a measurement of your deviation index and you could be either on the low end or on the high end. But you'd like to keep that deviation index to be relatively small. Then the definition of our deviation index, if you take your exposure index and you divide by your exposure index that you were targeting, that's kind of the input to the deviation index. And then we also take the logarithm just so that this won't vary too quickly the logarithm will kind of compress it and make it vary a little bit more slowly will give us what we call the deviation index that we can track and see how we're doing as a function of time. To get a feeling of what this relationship is like, you can actually look at a plot like this to show you this kind of log relationship. Again, this is the ideal point right here. If you have a zero deviation index, that's the best that you can do. And that's where you have the ratio of the actual exposure to the target exposure is just one. Sometimes the target exposure is also called the reference exposure. Then for instance, if you had twice as much exposure on the image receptor as you were hoping or planning to do with that target or reference, then you actually would have a deviation index of three. Kind of likewise, if you had half as much exposure as you were targeting, you would have a deviation index of minus three. And the idea is with the deviation index, you'd like to stay as close as possible to the planning and get the deviation index smaller. In reality, it has been found that this is actually relatively difficult to do in practice, especially in situations where you're doing imaging at the bedside and in less controlled environments. We'd like to be reproducible with the exposure on the image receptor such that we can get reproducible image quality. These are just some example points like I had on the graph. If you're a factor of two less, you have half the exposure at the image receptor, that's a DI of minus three. And if you have a factor of two more, that's a DI of three. 40% too much is a DI of one and a half, for instance. Then from the AAPM, the task group 116, what were the recommendations for the actions that you should take depending on what your DI is? If you're more than that three off, if you're less than half as much of the radiation or more than twice as much of the radiation, that's where you're gonna actually want to take action Actually look at the images, see if you need to reacquire. There's an intermediate range from a DI of one to three, where it's kind of like a monitoring, only reacquire if really necessary here. And you had a target range of minus one half to plus one half. You really like to be in that, in that tight range, ideally. And if you're underexposed, you know, if you're less than minus one on the DI, the images are going to be noisier the idea would be you would consult your radiologist and see if the image is readable or if you would need to repeat. And if you were 
less than minus three, less than one half of the exposure intended, the recommendation would be to repeat. One thing to keep in mind, we call this exposure index. Again, it's the exposure at the detector or the image receptor. It is not a measure of the radiation dose directly in the patient. Obviously, it typically correlates with, but it's dependent on lots of other factors, such as the habitus of the patient, the KVP. Given that, the vendors all decided to make their own separate names, such that it would be nice and simple for you as a technologist to keep track of these. Instead of using just one naming convention, they've chosen to use separate naming conventions. GE Healthcare, it's called the DE. That focuses on the fact that it's the detector exposure index. Philips just uses the exposure index. Canon uses reached exposure index or REX. Siemens uses exposure index or EXI. And then luckily on the deviation index, all the vendors have used the same DI or deviation index in order to denote the deviation index. On your UI, these are the values you're gonna be looking for for the different vendors. As you're working together between the technologist, radiologist, medical physicist, the first thing is you need to be working collaboratively because you're on the same team. You're trying to accomplish the same goal of getting the best images you can for that radiation dose to the patient. You wanna be monitoring these regularly and trying to improve your deviation indices, get them into a narrower range such that you're showing tighter control of the actual deviation index. In follow-up studies that have been done by the APM, for instance, it has been shown that these standards are actually quite difficult to achieve in actual clinical practice. In reality, what you wanna do is focus on working on the improved, not necessarily strict adherence to those initial standards that were laid out. If you monitor and you find that there's an issue, work on those technical parameters, you know, the KVP, MA, the SID, for given protocols that you're having an issue being a tight uh, deviation index, you need to work on those technical parameters with your staff, again, with the medical physicist recommendations for how you can actually be making changes to those x-ray protocols. And then we can think of this just as a tool that can help guide collaboration between yourself as a radiographer or technologist and the medical physicist. And again, this is essentially a replacement of film had kind of the built-in way of monitoring exposure. Now we have to do this extra work because the new detectors actually don't have these limitations of film, but we have to actually work a little bit harder just to make sure that we're using the proper exposure for each and every patient. Check out our video next on CR or DR systems, because that's gonna let you know why we actually have these different properties on the new image receptors that we're using for digital radiography. Coming up next.